my heart is overwhelmed. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I'll hold on to what is true, though I cannot see. Though the storms of life they come and the road ahead gets steep, I will lift these hands in praise. I will believe. I'll remind myself. I'll remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because of your son. Love came down. And love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. And I am yours. I am forever yours. In mountain high or valley low, I sing out, remind my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours. When my heart is filled with hope And every promise comes my way When I feel your hands of grace Rest upon me I'm staying desperate for you, God I'm staying humbled at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I will believe Come on, we'll remind ourselves I'll remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son Love came down And love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free And I'm yours I am forever yours Mountain high or valley low mountain high or valley low I'll sing out remind my soul that I am yours I am forever yours and I am yours I am yours for all my days Jesus I am yours cause I that up because I am yours and I am yours for all my days Jesus I am yours and I am yours and I am yours for all my days Jesus I am and I am yours, and I am yours for all my days, Jesus. I am yours, and love came down and rescued me, love came down and set me free, and I am yours, I am forever yours. Mountain high or valley low, I'll sing out, remind my soul that I am yours, I am forever yours. Oh, I am yours, I am forever yours, and I am yours, I am forever yours.
a grace so relentless I am one by perfect love wrapped within the arms of heaven in a peace that lasts forever sinking deep in mercy see I'm wide awake drawing Stood by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Oh, your love. on when we're lost he pursues us first when I'm lost you pursue me lift my head to see your glory Lord of all so beautiful here in you I find shelter captivated by the splendor of your face my secret place I'm wide away drawing closer by grace and all my heart is yours all fear removed I breathe you in I lean into your love No your love Your love so deep is washing over is all I seek you are my everything Jesus Christ you are my one desire Lord hear my only cry to know you all my life your love so deep is washing over me your this is all I seek, you are my everything, Jesus Christ, you are my one desire, Lord hear my only cry, to know you all my life, I'm wide awake, drawing close by grace. No, my heart is yours. Oh, fear removed. I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Oh, your love. So, Father, we just thank you so much for this precious time that we have, Lord, to cry out your name, Jesus. And I just pray that your love wash over every single person that is tuning in, over the families that are represented here, that we just sink deep into your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness, Father. So God, let that be our cry. Let that be the cry of our heart that we can be with you, that we can see your glory and worship you forever, Lord. So the best that we know how, we turn our faces towards you. We open our hearts, we open our ears and our minds to who you are, Jesus, and the price you paid on that cross. So Father, we pray all these things in your mighty name, in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys. Enjoy the rest of the service.
Akuo, it is so awesome to be spending time with you again. I'm always so fired up to be involved in these conversations with you based on the word that God gave us this year to live out, which is ready. Now, the idea behind that is something I know that you uh, know, know about, right? If, especially if you spent any time with us. It's that we are ready right now as currently constructed. We're all ready to make an impact on this world. We are ready to listen to God, love people, learn our purpose, and link to our community. And in the series that we're in, we've been taking a look at how, what a second nature looks like, how we can do all of these things, all these else, by leaning on what Jesus has asked us to do, which is develop a second nature. We can develop the nature of Jesus, which you're ready for. You're ready to do things in your life to develop that nature of Jesus. And some of y'all, you might be super excited about this because today marks the last message in this series called Second Nature. Next week, we'll have something totally new for us to talk about. But in this final message of this Second Nature sermon series, we're going to talk about a piece of scripture that we probably know well if you've been with us for the last year or so. But we might be looking at it in a different way. Really, it's something that you see in game shows. For instance, who remembers the game Deal or No Deal? Howie Mandel would host and call out all these ladies with these 26 cases. One of those cases would have a million dollars in it. And to start, the contestant would get to choose one case, right? Like they'd pick their favorite number, some, some sort of sentimental reason, right? Then after choosing the case, they would eliminate a few cases at a time. Each time the banker would make an offer to the contestant. The contestant could take the cash offer from the banker or keep on holding their suitcase which they didn't know the amount to. And y'all, I gotta tell you, this show got me. If I saw this show on TV, I would lose like at least 10 to 15 minutes of my life every single time. And to be honest, it still happens. But the point is, there are choices. So many choices of this game. And when you think about it, the choices are what made the game exciting, right? Because when you saw that contestant make a great choice, you'd be like, yeah, go get them. And then when the contestant made a poor choice, you would like, oh, just moan with them. And I think the reason we react to this is because we understand what it feels like. Maybe not to pick a case, but we know what it feels like to make a good choice and see our day get better because of it. We know what it feels like when we make the perfect choice and it ripples throughout the rest of our lives. Then on the other side, we know what it feels like to make a poor choice, the one that messes our day up, right? We also know what it feels like to make the poor choice, the one that we still feel to this day. It's kind of what life is all about. The choices we make, they all add up to where we're at right now. Now here's the good news. Maybe the bad news. Almost every option, every place that there is a fork in the road, the choice is ours. We almost always get the chance to choose on our own. And in the closing remarks of Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, he speaks directly to this idea of choice. How one choice can lead you in a good direction, and the other choice can leave you in a less than ideal position. So let's read what Jesus had to say, as recorded by his friend and disciple Matthew. Jesus said, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house in solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Okay, so imagine you are watching Jesus sitting amongst all those other people. You've heard him explain to you some of the greatest wisdom this world has ever heard, right? He's given you some of the best ways to live your life. He has helped you understand the key to eternal life. And then he ends it with this. Two choices. Jesus gives us the right direction to remove in, which is his path, taking on his nature. And he tells us what happens if we go down that path. We're on a sturdy foundation. We are ready for the storms and the floods that will come our way. And he shows us the wrong direction to move in, following a path of our own, our own will. And he tells us what happens if we go down that path. 
When the storms and the floods come, we will collapse. So we have the choice to be sturdy, like we learned all about last year. It was our word that God gave us for 2022, having the sturdy foundation. And it's really simple. We are sturdy because we follow Jesus, understanding who Jesus was while he was on this earth and who he is now. Which if you don't know, it's called the gospel, the good news, which is this. Jesus, God in human form, came down to this earth. He was human just like you and me. He was tempted. He felt the same frustration and despair in the world that we all have. However, he lived a life completely without sin. He is the one person that lived a life worthy of hanging out in heaven for all of eternity. But here's what happened. Jesus laid his life down to become the perfect sacrifice for us, for all the ways we have sinned. He experienced that torture up on the cross and gave his life for all of us so we could avoid an eternity of torture, so we could experience his grace. All we have to do to access this grace is listen to the message that he left behind for his disciples and eventually us. All we have to do is simply believe that Jesus did all of that for us to receive that grace from him. By receiving that grace, our identity totally changes. We are turned into God's masterpiece. We are worthy. That's the long version. The short version is that Jesus died to save us from our sins. And when we believe, we experience a life and an eternity with God. We then have a sturdy foundation. It's not about our strength or know-how. It's about us following the nature of Jesus and living that out in our lives. We choose to follow in this way. That's what it looks like for individuals. And that's what it looks like for our Akuo community. When we are centered around those ideas, when we are centered a Jesus-centered community, when we are a Jesus-centered church, we can withstand the storms and the flood. And if you're outside with us on Sundays, we can withstand the heat. And when we are a Jesus-centered church, amazing things can happen. As a team, as a community, we choose to be centered around Jesus. Not around a pastor or a building or a theologian or a political ideal or a general idea. At Akuo, we choose to have our foundation be Jesus and we are doing our best to live out the second nature that he's left for us. Now, personally, for me, I'm doing my best to do that. I believe in Jesus, what he did here on this earth. And I listen to him the best I can. I follow him when I hear from him in the best way I can. Y'all, I'm not the best preacher, as you've seen with the great guests that we've had here the last few weeks. There are much more talented communicators than me, and that's okay. And y'all, I'm not even the best like organizational builder, but the one thing I know I can do is follow God when he gives me a word or a feeling or a thought or whatever, right? Y'all, I don't do it because I have to. Every time I hear from the Lord, there's an option to do it or not. But I choose to follow. I get stuck in these weird and crazy situations with this church when I follow. Not because it's fun and awesome and easy. It's normally the opposite. It's not fun. It's less than awesome. And it's difficult. But you know what? It always works. Because it's not me that is making it happen. I'm not standing on the sinking sand of my wisdom and abilities. I'm firmly planted on the solid rock of Jesus. So in this, my hope is that all the other things that I lack, the one thing that I can do for you is be the best follower around. I'm not here to lead you. My goal is to follow Jesus alongside you. We are all in this together. We are ready to do this. We are ready because we have a sturdy foundation personally, each one of us, and as a community. Now, it's your choice. You have everything you need to live this life that, you would have, that you've been saying that you would. And it's like they say in the Shawshank Redemption. It comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living or get busy dying. It's one of those two things. Live or die. What does living look like for you? Well, I, I think it's the stuff that you've already seen, the, all the things that you're ready for, which I know some of you are still wondering, right? Like, what am I ready for? Well, there are some very basic things that we can all be doing right now that we are all ready for. And I think we can look at the four L's of Akuo. There are four very basic things that you can be doing, which aren't just things that we created. Jesus did all of these things. The first L is listen to God. 
Y'all got to get regular God times. We all do. If you aren't spending time with Jesus, it's going to be tough for you to have him as your foundation. Now, this doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to, you know, give days away and months and where you just sit in silent rooms. This could be as easy as reading your Bible and praying for 10 to 15 minutes a day. You could be singing and dancing and talking to God. You could be working and talking to Jesus while you're driving. It could just be five seconds like, Lord, thank you for letting me catch that green light. Whatever it is, having that conversation with him is all that matters. Now, the next L is love people. When we talk about loving people in our context, this is getting into community with one another. When you're in this community, you give out love to others and then you receive love from others. You might say like, yeah, I have friends, humby. I don't need this group. To which I would reply, yes, but are you and your friends intentionally Christ-centered in your hangouts? Because that's what we're doing here when we talk about Akuo community groups. We are living that out with the sturdy foundation. We are ready for when the rains and the winds and the floods come. So when those times happen, and they will, you have a community around you to help you out and point you in the right direction. That's why I'm always saying being a part of one of these community groups could be one of the best things that you do while you're here at Akuo, is because they will be there for you. After that, the next L is learn your purpose. Now, we've done a little class before where we get together and go through spiritual gifts and take a look at how you are put together and how you can leverage your gifts for the kingdom, for your community. And we're looking to do another one here before the end of the year, and that's awesome. It's a great thing that I would love for you to be a part of. However, there are other ways that we can start to figure out our purpose right here, right now. And I'd start it with just two very simple questions that you can ask yourself. The first thing is that you can ask yourself is, what do I like? The second question is, what is it that I see that makes me really upset? Now, here's the deal. If there's something that you like, it might be part of what God is calling you to lean into. If there's something that you see, the other thing is there's something that you see and you're like, that thing is wrong and it has to change. That could be a passion that God has put in you. When you look around and ask, why hasn't done anybody done anything about this thing? Maybe it's because you are supposed to be the one that is starting to make the difference. And y'all, it's not going to be you walking alone. Akuo exists to help you figure that out. We want to pour gas on that fire. We want to help get you resourced in that. So you have permission to go and start that thing that you want to help out. You have the permission to start something that Akuo will help you get going. Finally, learning your purpose can lead you to the last, is what can lead you to the last L, which is linking to your community. For me, I'm feeling lots of stuff for people in our senior citizen community and our student community, and for the single moms doing it on their own. Because of that, I've been praying and looking for opportunities that, where we can be helping folks out in those areas. So we're gonna be having some linking opportunities coming up here soon. The first one is next week, August the 2nd. Youth for Christ is asking if we can help them paint a building that they serve middle and high school students in. Then on August 12th, we'll be helping out with a community-wide back-to-school fair. They're asking us to help them hand out backpacks and food to families in need. Then coming up this year, we will have a handful of opportunities to serve the senior citizens at the Sorrento. Now, in the coming months, we're planning a few days where we can pick up laundry from there, take it to the laundromat, and then bring it back to those tenants fresh and clean. We're also planning on making our trunk or treat event more accessible for them by providing a golf cart ride back and forth. Then we'll make sure that we hook up the residents with turkeys and sides for their Thanksgiving meals. Those are just a few things that we're going to be doing with the folks at the Sorrento. And we would love for you to be a part of these. Really, I would love for you to be a part of stepping up in any of the four L's that we talk about here at Akuo. The choice is yours, though. Is this something that you want to be a part of? Do you want to have a great, thriving spiritual life? Do you want to have a group of people around you that you know will be praying for you and then helping you grow on your life? Do you want to know what God has called you to do in in this world? And do you want to see God change your community for the better? Or is your couch more important? Is the next TV binge better than what God has to offer? Is that new guy, that new gal, better than all these things? Of course not. 
Now, I'm not saying to stop living your life to do this. What I am saying is to develop your second nature. Step away from the nature that got you into the place that you're in right now and chase after something new. Yo, some of y'all are in a bad spot right now and you keep doing the same things and you're not satisfied with your life. Do something different. Try something new. Put on this second nature. And it's scary. I know, new can be scary, but you know what? You have the Akuo community to stand alongside you every step of the way. That's what we're here for. But you gotta make that choice. You gotta get up and say, this is gonna be different. And then you have to let somebody know, hey, I'm gonna go on this journey. Because if you do it and no one knows, there's nobody there to help you. Nobody's gonna understand what you're doing and immediately jump on with you. But you gotta make that choice. That's where it all starts. And for some of us, the first step we have to, the first choice that we have to make, the first step for us to take is through the threshold of faith. For us to have a sturdy foundation, we need to believe. Now, it's not about behavior or holiness, just simply believing. So if you wanna declare or redeclare that belief today, I can help you do that. To do that, you can just have a conversation between you and Jesus that we would call a prayer. And to help you out during this time, what I'm going to do is ask the entire Akuo community to pray along with you. Because here at Akuo Church, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community praying along with you. So if you want to declare your faith to Jesus today, just say something like this just between you and him right now. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. Okay, we're a kuo. We want to be listening to the Lord. So we're going to take a moment right now to ask him a question and just sit there and listen. So here's the question. Just ask God, what is the answer to the next choice that I need to make in my life? I'm going to give you a few minutes to ask that question to listen, and then I'll come back to finish in prayer. All right, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Jesus, thank you for this moment here and now. Jesus, right now we ask you to help us, to help us make the right choices in our lives. Help us find the right direction to go. 
Jesus, we pray that you would show us the right people to be around. We pray that you would give us your nature. Thank you for the way that you're going to move in our lives. Jesus, we love you so much, and we pray all of these things in your beautiful and awesome name, Jesus. Amen. Now, before we go, let me share a few things that we have going on. This past weekend, y'all, we had some dinner groups, and they were so much fun. We had more than 50 people show up to the dinners and enjoy being in community with one another. So just first off, thank you for showing up to these uh, dinners, and thank you to the hosts that made these events so special. Now, to keep the fun of community going, we will have our community groups kicking off in September. But before we get there, we need some folks to help lead these groups. Now, I, I know leading a group can sound like a lot, but here's the deal. What we want you to do is lead what you love. It could be basketball or running or watching movies or Spurs games or Mario Kart or baking. Whatever it is, do it. This could be a part of discovering your purpose. We will help you lead what you love. We will support you and provide leadership in this. Now, to help you out with this, we're going to have group leader trainings happening after church on August the 13th and August the 20th. You don't have to go to both. You just pick one. Now, this meeting is not a commitment to start a group. This could be a meeting that you show up to just if you're curious in being a group leader. Now, if you're interested in attending one of these groups, you can scan the QR code on the screen. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the way we are generous here to Kuo. Part of the nature of Jesus, the second nature that we're trying to develop, is generosity. And I want you to know that here at Akuo, as individuals, me personally, the folks that are here, and as an organization, we practice that. So if you do give here at Akuo, if you are generous to us, I want you to know that you aren't giving to Akuo, but you're giving to your community through Akuo. And we want you to engage that part of your second nature and be generous. Now, if you aren't sure where to start, maybe uh, you've been asking God what you should be giving and you haven't heard from him yet. One of the many ways that you can express your generosity is through the biblical method of generosity called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. That could be where you start until you figure it out. Now, the celebration of giving, that excitement of, of generosity might not be a possibility for you right now. Things might be really tough for you and your family, and if that's you, that's okay. If things are tough for you right now, please allow us to help you out because we want to be linked to you during your tough time. So if you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Or if you know someone that needs some help, please let us know. To do that, all you have to do is go to our website, akuo.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send an email to us at help at akuo.church. You can also text or call the church at 210-901-8785. Now, if you're willing to give here at the church, the way that you can do that is by going to our website at kuo.church. And when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text to give option. For that, all you have to do is text Akuo, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to give to the number 77977. If you don't want to give electronically, we also have our PO box available if you would like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at PO box 100-125. San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, y'all, that's all that I have for you today. I just want you to know that I love and appreciate all of you, and we will be praying for you right now and throughout the rest of the week. So before we go, let me just pray over you one last time. Jesus, I ask as people turn off their TVs and their computers and, and put away their phones and tablets that, that you would just be speaking to them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would Give them the answers to the choices that they are, need to make in their lives right now. I pray that you would make the paths that they need to take so well lit and so easy to follow. I pray that as winds and rains and, and all this craziness comes in these people's lives, that you would hold them up. That it wouldn't be through their strength and their know-how and their abilities, but it would be on their dependence in you that they would get through these incredibly difficult situations. And Jesus, I pray that as they're going through these situations, that they would notice that it's you that's carrying them through. We thank you for who you are, Jesus, and we thank you for how you love us. We pray all these new things in your name. Amen. All right, that's all that we have for you this week. We'll see you next time. Thank you.